Hello and welcome. This is a tutorial on how to take a Miku Miku Dance MMD model and import it into Wakaru for use as a VTuber avatar such as this here. Uh, when you get started and you've chosen an MMD model, uh, please check its license and ensure it allows you to actually use the model in Wakaru and video production. Some licenses will restrict you to only using the model in Miku Miku Dance, or they won't allow you to convert the model to other formats. So if your model uh, license works, then download your MMD model. In this case, I'll be downloading or using Vien here. If you're going to follow along with this tutorial, I'd recommend using the same model file, because some model files won't actually work in Wakaru, such as Rina version 2. On the right here, I have the instructions for Wakaru in English. If you followed these instructions before, you probably got stuck here at Process FBX to Asset Bundles. In that case, feel free to skip ahead to that part of the video. So, once you have your MMD model, you also have to download the Unity game engine, specifically this version here and something called MMD for Mechanim. So to do that, you can just search for Unity and you'll get to this download page here. Click Unity 2018 and scroll down to 2018.2.20 and download and install this version of Unity. You'll also search for MMD for Mechanim and you should find this page here. Click Control F and type MMD to find the download link here. You'll notice there's a slight difference between these two versions, but that shouldn't matter. Once you've installed Unity, uh, run it and you should get a screen like this. Click Skip and you should end up with this screen here. Click on New and name your project. For instance, import MMD to Wakaru and click Create Project. This will take a while, so feel free to take a break as it creates your project. So after Unity creates your project, the next step is to add MMD for Mechanim. So an easy way to do this is to find the location where you downloaded it and you should find this file mmd 4 mechanimunity package. Double click on that and UDD will automatically add it to your current project. You can check the contents here, click import. When you get this message, you can click I made a backup. Go ahead. Okay, the next step is to import your MMD model. So for this, I'm going to create a folder here in assets, call it MMD models. And now I'm going to right click here and click show in Explorer. Now find where you downloaded your MMD model and copy the whole folder into your MMD models folder that you created in Unity. When you go back to Unity it will automatically import the model. Okay so open the folder and look for a file like vn.mmd for mechanim.asset. The file name might differ, but you'll know you clicked on the right file if you see something like this here. So again, please read the license terms. Click on Read Me English. And if you agree to all of this, check these three boxes and click Agree. Next, uh, click Process here, and this step will probably take a few minutes, depending on the complexity of the model. 
Uh, with this model on my computer, I think it will take at least five minutes for this phase. So um, I'll take a break here and I'll be right back. Okay, so this process still has a ways to go. Once this is done, this window will close and Unity will finish the importing process. Or rather, the processing from MMD to an FBX model. Okay, looks like it's done. So here, it's created vn.fbx. We can check and make sure everything looks okay. And the next step is to click Rig and change animation type from generic to humanoid and click Apply. Okay, um, there's some errors, but we can ignore those. Check the materials, everything looks good. And now we come to this step. So for this step, um, the instructions do mention something about a prefab and a root object, uh, but it's not really clear what to do. So what you do is you take vn.fbx and drag it into the hierarchy over here. This will add vn to your scene. You, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in, move around. Now we have to drag VN back into the project folder to create a prefab of it. Um, I'm actually going to create a separate folder here, call it prefab, just to organize a little bit. And I'll drag VN from the scene hierarchy into the project folder. And that makes VN.prefab. Now to make an asset bundle, we have to go to Window and Package Manager. We actually have to install something here, go to All, click on Asset Bundle Browser and click Install. This will also take a while. Okay, it's done. So we'll close this window. And now when we click on Window, we get Asset Bundle Browser. So click on that. Now take vn.prefab and drag that prefab into the Configure dialog here. Make sure you drag the prefab and not the FBX model, which is back here. They look the same, so it can be easy to confuse the two. So now that our prefab is in here, we go to Build, choose Standalone Windows, and click Build. There we go, so we can close this now. Now we need to go and find the asset bundle we just made. So here I'll right click show in Explorer and I'm going to navigate back up. Here's the MMD models, assets, and here's the asset bundles folder we just created. Standalone windows and these are the files we're going to move into Wakaru. So on Steam if you right click Wakaru and select properties you'll get this window here. Go to local files, browse local files, and these are Wakaru's files on your computer, so go to Models, Windows, and this is the Alicia model that comes with Wakaru by default. Now we're going to back that up by making a folder called Alicia, and we'll just move these files into there. And now we'll copy the VN files that we just exported, copy them into here. Now there is a difference. Um, Wakaru actually expects Windows not standalone windows. So we need to rename these files to windows and windows.manifest. And there we go. Now I'm going to restart Wakaru so you can see the model that we just exported. So I'll be right back. There we go. So 1280 by 720 is a good size. And there's Vien, the model that we just exported. So I'll just agree to these terms. And here you'll click Start 
Um, but if your model doesn't show up in this preview, or in this list for that matter, um, that means that something went wrong, or maybe the model just won't work in Wakaru. Well, let me just put this off to the side and click start. Okay, so if you're concerned about your webcam or face showing up, um, you can disable these options here to disable the preview. Um, I recommend this if that's something that concerns you because I've actually had a broadcasting accident already where a game resized my window resolution uh, when it went full screen and that changed the size of Okaru and you could actually see part of the menu in the stream. So now that we have this model here, I'm going to click Start Sync. There we go. Now, when you click that, it's important to actually have a neutral facial expression, uh, your mouth closed, your eyes open, and your eyebrows uh, normal. Otherwise, you can end up with things like your eyebrows being permanently stuck up like that. Uh, if that happens, just click the button again, and hopefully it will reset. So let's uh, adjust the height here and zoom in. And for the last part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take this VTuber model and actually use it in OBS so you can stream or record videos with it. Oh, the iris tracking is a little off though, so I'm going to actually replace that with drag with mouse and I'll hold Z and the left mouse button and now I can drag the eyes. There we go. So now we'll open OBS. So click Add Source, and choose Game Capture, type Wakaru. Choose Capture Specific Window, and select Wakaru.exe. Here it is. There we go, and uncheck Capture Cursor. OK. So now we need to get rid of this sidebar, and we need to make the background transparent. In Wakaru, turn off Use Sky Background and you get this green screen effect like this. Now in OBS, we'll right click Wakaru, Filters, Add Filter, and choose Crop slash Pad. So here we'll choose right, we'll make it maybe a 450 pixels to get rid of that. And we can crop the left a little bit too, maybe by 50 pixels. And now for the green screen, we add a color key filter and that, that looks good, but there's a bit of green around the edges here. So we'll drag the similarity bar to the right until those green edges disappear. And that should do it. And there we go. You can move the avatar around, resize it as you want. Oh. And if you want it to look in a different direction, you can click maybe this here and tilt it like that. There we go. So that's the tutorial. The eyes are kind of weird. Yep, so that's the tutorial. Um, hopefully it was helpful. Uh, if you liked it, uh, you can click like if you like. And uh, well, for one more thing. Maybe make the expression a little bit more serious here. And so remember, uh, if you're going to do this, please make sure that the model's license allows you to actually use it in Wakaru take these off. Yeah, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. So, after letting this run for a while, you should see something like this. Uh, this process still has some ways to go. that didn't happen. Ooh.